Okay, so now we're starting domestic appliances, room air conditioners this week in this course. And this is on page 1433. And if you go to the first page, they got a little safety checklist that says wear back brakes when lifting or a belt uh, when moving appliances, lift with your legs, keeping your back straight. Observe practical, prop, proper electrical safety techniques. Wear goggles and gloves when transferring refrigerant and when performing service on window units, make sure all loose clothing are secure. Well, that's a given. You know you shouldn't be wearing loose clothes on. Um, there's a reason we don't wear ties in HVAC because uh, we're around moving belts and fans and such things. And if one got a hold of a tie, might, you may go home with quite the headache. Now, let's go to uh, page 1433. Single room air conditioning, which is also called room air. And it says... It can be accomplished in several ways. It involves the use of package units. A common type is a room window unit for cooling only. And then they have variations like electric heat and heat pump. It is there an adequate airflow between the rooms must be accomplished if you only have in one unit. So let's talk about room air units on page 1434, okay? Room air units. The manufacturer's design objectives are efficiency of space and equipment and a low noise level, which is very important because you don't want a loud window unit. You want it to be kind of quiet. All right, the intent of the designer is to get the most capacity out of the smallest unit. Cooling units may either be window or through the wall type. They're much the same. Typically having only one double shaft fan motor for the evaporating condenser. So window units have one double shaft motor. All right, and I'll show you what one looks like real quick. One double shaft motor, okay? Um, Like that one right there. That's what it looks like. So on one side is the blower wheel. On the other side is the condenser fan blade. So it turns in the same rotation. So it's a double shaft. Okay. Those are window unit motors. Now, let's go back to where we were. That's on your test. It's going to ask you what kind of motors are on a window unit. And you have to say a single, one motor, one single motor, double shaft. And they range these units from 4,000 BTUs, a third ton to 24,000 BTUs, okay? Now, you can get them a little smaller, depend on the manufacturer, and a little larger. In fact, one of your essays you have to do this week is research the largest window unit you can find in capacity. And I think most of you will find a 36,000 BTU three-ton unit. And you have to tell, you, you're going to have a lot of details. You have to tell who's a manufacturer, model number, um, does it have electronic controls and all kinds of things? You have to tell me everything about it. Some units are front discharge and some are top discharge. Top discharge is most common and the controls are at the top. <clears throat> now, this is the thing right here. I want to show you this picture. I don't think it's on here. Uh, let's see. No. Okay. So if you look at this picture here, see those two units, A and B? A 
is made for a window. You see how it's got the grill in the back of A, so you can slot it up? And look at B. That one does not have a grill so it, on the side, so it's made to go into a wide, thick wall. That's the difference between a through-the-wall and a regular window unit. Now, your book says they have the wraparound sleeve. All right, window units have two types of sleeves. All right, so let's get to that. Condition in the air in the individual room. That's what these do. They can package units, cooling only, our heating. All right, and you need air circulation. Next, this is what one looks like, and this is what it looks like with the strip heater right over the evaporator coil. It can be a window, a through the wall type, and I just showed you the picture. The one double shaft motor, here are the capacities. Unit can be fixed to the case. I have a chassis that slides out. That's where we're at now. We're talking about the, the slide out chassis, okay? Um, this is what it looks like. Notice when this one's in the window unit, when this is in the uh, wall or the window, you can take the cover off and slide it out and put it down. You take your dolly, turn it sideways on the ground, lay it flat. Lay it on its back is what you actually do. Take the dolly and lay it on its back. Slide out the window unit, sit it on it, and then roll it outside. This one, the whole unit's got to come out. So you got to lift the window, have somebody in the back of it, or have your hands, and pull it out. Because notice the wraparound sleeve is screwed to the unit. Whereas here... This is attached to the window or the wall, and you have to slot it out. So there's a slide-out chassis, and the chassis slides out, and here's one where the wraparound cases are fastened to the chassis. Okay, so that's the two different kinds of window units you'll run into. Now, it also says, of course, I'll back it up one. It was talking about how air goes in and comes out the side. And here it goes in the sides and comes out the top. That's your two different kinds that you'll run into. All right. Now your book also says the term chassis. What does the word, the word chassis mean? It means assembly of all the components that make up the system. So you have a wraparound sleeve and a slot out and you have the slot out chassis type. You also have roof mount. Now roof mount looks like the type that goes on travel trailers and motorhomes. See in your book right there? I think you've all seen those before. This type of unit may have been seen in gas station attendant boots. They're in the case of lifts on the top, controls at the top of the unit can be located anyway. So that's what that does.